All right, we're starting on slide number 34 today, organisms reproduce. Uh, we're gonna do 34 to 64. Here we go. Um, all organisms must reproduce. It's very important. Uh, success, biologically speaking, means for a species to continue long after the present individuals have died. That is what is important to living things, making more of their species. So their species does not cease to exist. That is what all living things want to do, is reproduce. This means there must be offspring and grand offspring and so on and so on. Uh, reproductive strategies. All organisms have strategies for reproductive success. Um, there are a couple of different ways this can happen. Uh, some of them involve parental uh, support, some of them just as many offspring as we can have and hope for the best. Those are kind of the basic two. We're going to go into each of them a little more specifically. Um, it takes energy to reproduce, create seeds or eggs, and nurture young. Uh, these strategies that have evolved create the greatest number of offspring which can survive. Important note, there, it will always be about the species, not the individual. In nature, uh, animals will seek out the strongest, the healthiest um, of its kind to reproduce with because the importance is that species continues. Um, their pride, uh, in a pride of lions, only the lionesses uh, reproduces. The pride is successful because they help raise the young. They all work together to take care of their offspring so that those offspring will survive. Asexual and sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction means having uh, two individuals that combine their genetic material, a male and a female. Asexual reproduction, only one individual contributes to the genetic material. So it is one living thing simply making a copy of itself. It is identical to the parent. Parent and offspring are identical. There are advantages and disadvantages to both, which we're going to go through. In asexual reproduction, a piece of a parent becomes a new individual. There is no variation between the DNA of the parent and the young. It's exactly the same. They are clones of each other. Uh, these are, uh, this picture is of marine sponges. Genetically, each one of these sponges is the same. However, you will notice this one is substantially larger than, say, this one. Does it, um, if you were here, we'd have a discussion as to why you think that is, and I'll go ahead and tell you. The reason this one is larger, just simply based on its position, food that falls through the water, just microscopic little bits, actually goes down into where this one does not get as much food because it cannot go directly into the sponge. As seedless plants are clones. Farmers used asexual reproduction to get more um, high producing plants. All new individuals of seedless pan plants are from the same type of asexual reproduction. Uh, the greatest issue is there with asexual reproduction, no genetic variation. So if I'm a farmer and I plant my corn crop and my corn crop has a, a disease, all of that corn is going to have that disease because that corn has been reproduced asexually, so just making a copy of that corn. That is why farmers, uh, if you've ever driven you know, out you know, in, by a farm field, you'll see like little tags and it'll say, you know, this type of seed is planted in this section and this type of seed is planted in this section and they do that so in case one of those types gets a disease, it hopefully will not kill their entire crop. Um, types of asexual reproduction. Single cell organisms can divide into two. This is called binary fission. Um, it is literally just the splitting of that organism into two. Regeneration. Some animals and plants can grow new individual from the part that has been broken off. Starfish are probably some that you think the most common of. You can, you know, take part of that off and then that little piece then becomes a whole new starfish. 
uh, the planarian and the starfish can grow a new individual from almost any piece of their body. Um, people and starfish eat clams. One group of clam diggers were so frustrated at the amount of empty clam shells they found. So they decided to catch all the starfish they could and kill them. They chopped up the starfish into pieces and threw the dead starfish back in the sea. So here they've got all this starfish. They just chop them all up, thinking they've killed them, and then they toss them back in the water. Every one of those little bitty pieces that they just chopped up turns into a whole new starfish. So all they have done is compounded their problem. I mean, I'll, I told you the answer, but we'll go ahead and, and look here. All the pieces regrew into, regrew into whole starfish. Now they had many more starfish eating their clams. Budding is another type of asexual reproduction. Budding is a new individual sprouting from a parent. The baby hydra uh, will live on their own. The, the coral on the right will form a colony. Um, this is an example of budding. It's literally where a baby grows out the top of what's already existing. Vegetative propagation. Most plants create new individuals from a body part. This is called vegetative propagation. If you look right here, each one of these new little leaflets becomes a whole new plant. Vegetative means from a root, stem, or leaf, and propagation means to increase in numbers. Um, a dead yucca trunk sprouted new yucca plants. The plant on the right lives in the rainforest. Each offspring, so each little, little offspring, um, has roots and will fall off the parent. So when this falls off, then it already is ready to implant into the ground to make a new plant. Vegetative propagation gives a high likelihood for the survival of the offspring. Um, in asexual reproduction, no DNA is passed to the offspring. There is one parent. There are two parents. The offspring is genetically different. Well, this one is. There is one parent. Asexual reproduction, one parent just makes a copy of itself. Uh, reproductive success is important for the individual, the local group, or the species. Remember, all living things want their species to continue, so that is what they're worried about, not the individual uh, organism itself. Obtaining new individuals of seedless plants require asexual reproduction, sexual reproduction, great variation of DNA, or two parents. Seedless plants is A, asexual reproduction. Uh, the organism in the picture is dying, budding, growing out of control, sexually reproducing. The answer here is budding. You see the little, the little, literally the offspring is growing out the top, or out the side in this case. Uh, look at this strawberry offspring. It's a result of, uh, you got this little, little sprout coming off the top here. Vegetative propagation. Fertilization, binary fission, or cloning, and that one is vegetative propagation. Sexual reproduction. Let me make sure I haven't gone too far. Uh, nope, we're going to 64, and I am on 53. Sexual reproduction requires DNA from two parents. The DNA is blended in the offspring, and there is genetic better, uh, variation. It's called fertilization. Fertilization is the union of sex cells, sperm and egg. In animals, the sperm and egg join. This is very important. In plants, the pollen and the ovule join. Um, during fertilization, the nuclei of the sperm and egg combine. It is critical that the new cell has the proper amount of chromosomes. So if an organism has 20 chromosomes, the fertilized egg must have 20 chromosomes. So how many chromosomes must the sperm and egg have? Well, it is 10. The reason it's 10, you, um, in humans, we have 46 chromosomes. You get 23 from your mom, 23 from your dad. So that that way, that fertilized egg has the total 46. So in this organism, 20 chromosomes 
um, is in the fertilized egg. So that means 10 had to come from the mom, 10 had to come from the dad. Um, in mitosis, uh, okay, we're going to start a new term here, meiosis. This is going to be the reproduction of sex cells. So in mitosis, the new cells had the same number of chromosomes and were identical to the parent cell. So that's where you've got new skin cells are making new skin cells. That uses mitosis. In meiosis, a complete individual is formed by two individuals coming together. Those sex cells have the same chromosome number reduced in half. This kind of division is called meiosis. So when you're talking about the reproduction of sex cells, it is meiosis. Every other cell, every other body cell uses mitosis. Uh, here is just a, a picture of what meiosis. So you're talking about, here's your sperm or your egg, and then that's, so it splits twice. Remember, the four cells formed by meiosis have half as many chromosomes as the parent cell. So each of these have half as many as a completed cell for that organism would have. Specialized cells called primary sex cells undergo meiosis to form sperm, egg in uh, animals and pollen or ovule in plants. Essentially, the primary sex cell undergoes mitosis but does not go back into interphase. It goes into prophase and divides again. The DNA does not replicate. After the second division, each cell has half the DNA of the primary sex cell because you're getting half from your mom, half from your dad. Uh, here you can see four pollen cells. Now this is in plants which have formed a single primary sex cell. Uh, chromosomes trade sections during meiosis. Now this 